if we compare two people who are exactly the same in every single metric, from height, weight, to the amount of time they've been training, everything is the same, except for the fact that person A has three more pounds of muscle than person B across his entire frame. My question to you guys is, does that mean that person A is necessarily always going to be stronger than person B? I'll give you guys a second to think about this question. Now, I feel confident in my answer and I feel confident that everyone watching will agree with me that no, person B can still be stronger than person A. But a harder question to answer is why? What can make person B stronger? This question haunted me for a long time. At times I saw myself as person B, surrounded by people with more muscle mass but I still thrived to become stronger than them. This has made me go into a rabbit hole of trying to understand powerlifting programming and doing lots of research in understanding the best tactics people use to become the strongest version of themselves. So, in today's presentation, we'll be covering two main concepts, which are periodization and progressive overload, and I will be visually representing them in a powerlifting graph. So to start off, what is periodization? My definition of periodization is calculating and managing your fatigue through changing the variables of weight, reps, and sets. Now, what is fatigue? I kind of used it uh, quickly in my definition of periodization, but that is your body's reaction to training stimulus. So how tired it gets, how sore it gets, and how damaged your muscle gets, and your, how damaged your body gets. And what is progressive overload? Progressive overload, in my definition, would be over time, over a certain period of time, going heavier and heavier and heavier in a certain amount of weight to, dis, for, to force your body to adapt and therefore make it stronger. So. Like I mentioned earlier, I have a visual representation of a training cycle, which is right behind me. So in this training cycle, our X variable will be time, our Y variable will be strength, and our initial starting max strength will be 100 pounds. And today, I'll use the example of a max barbell bench press being 100 pounds. The first phase we go into will be the fatigue phase. This will be the phase where you become substantially weaker than your initial phase. And at the peak of the fatigue phase, maybe we'll say our max barbell bench press is only 80 pounds. So, many people may wonder, why would you intentionally make yourself weaker in the training program? Well, the idea behind it is you have to make yourself weaker to make yourself stronger in the long run. If anyone has trained legs super hard, you'll understand that the day after training legs, you can barely walk upstairs, you can barely sit down, all these things become a lot harder because your body is so fatigued. The day after you train legs, your body is fatigued and substantially weaker than your initial point. But in the long run, you'll become stronger, so you have to trust the process. So after we go through this fatigue phase, we're going to go into our recovery phase. How do we force our body to go from the fatigue phase into a recovery phase, you may ask. The idea is we'll decrease the amount of sets and decrease the amount of reps while still increasing the amount of weight. The decrease in reps and sets will lower fatigue and help our body recover while the increase in weight will still follow the principle of progressive overload. Now, the third phase we'll be going into is supercompensation. This is the most important phase and probably the most complicated one because this is the phase where your body will be compensating for the amount of training stimulus you gave it, the fatigue it's dealing with, and the increase in weight. So your body is compensating for all of those things by becoming stronger. This is a, a peaking phase where your body will peak at its strength level and you'll be the strongest that it possibly can be. For this example, maybe our bench press became 130 pounds. So, since it's the strongest, that is when we'll want to do a competition or that is when you want to max out or, or anything like that, like test your strength. How we got to this phase from the recovery phase is the same way we got from the recovery phase from the fatigue phase, which is 
we keep decreasing the amount of reps and the amount of sets while still increasing the amount of weight. Still following the principle of progressive overload. This is a pattern you'll see and it's super important. So after we go through the super compensation phase, we're inevitably going to become weaker and our bench is going to go from 130 to maybe 120 pounds. The main thing you have to remember is our ending point is still going to be substantially stronger than our beginning point. An issue I see with a lot of lifters is when they reach a super compensation phase, they don't know it yet. And they want to keep pushing their strength. And they want to keep reducing the amount of sets, keep reducing the amount of reps, and increasing the weight until they start failing lifts, their body starts to fail on them, and they start to become injured. That is why it's important to understand this graph and understand that there is a point of supercompensation and your body will inevitably become weaker. Once you reach this point of a, at the end of a program where your be new bench press max is 120 pounds, at that point you can run this program again. Go through a fatigue phase you know, with a lot, of, uh, a lot of reps and a lot of sets with lighter weight. So then you can slowly go into the recovery phase and slowly go into the super compensation phase and do this cycle over and over and over again until you become the strongest version of yourself possible or at least become stronger than person A.